Motor City, located centrally in the state of Michigan. Being the state capital and a city known as an industrial center, Lansing, of course, has a few growing pains. For instance, there are more automobile owners than ever before. And that brings us to the men who must handle the traffic and the many problems this traffic presents. The police department consists of a total personnel of 145 persons, representing maximum protection for Lansing's 100,000 citizens. Lansing has long been known as one of the safest cities in the United States. Then take into consideration that this year alone, there will be more than 5,000 traffic accidents of all kinds in this city, which is one of the safest. There is always a police officer on duty night and day, and a quick call will bring them to the scene no matter what the trouble may be. The policeman is called upon to perform many varied duties and is fully trained in this field of public service. In this ultra-modern fire station, the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners meet on the second Tuesday of every month. The board consists of eight members, one from each ward, who are constantly seeking to improve the facilities and methods. The City Police Department is one of the best dressed and best equipped in the country. They are fully trained in all types of police action and are able to handle any situation which may arise with the greatest of efficiency. Often their daily routine of protecting the residents are the city patrolmen, a group of able-bodied men patrolling the city in a fleet of modern squad cars. The patrolman must be an alert, wide-awake officer, keeping on the outlook for anything which does not coincide with the usual routine. The invention of the two-way radio was of great importance to police departments throughout the country. With automobile traffic at a new all-time high, Naturally, the traffic division of your local police department is a very busy place night and day. A patrol car sends a hurried call into headquarters, and immediately, the wheels of a great organization go spinning into action. If needed, an ambulance is rushed to the scene of action without delay. A complete report is written and filed for future reference. A full report will also come from the officer who reported the accident. These reports are an important part of the officer's duties since they not only involve many important facts pertaining to the accident, but also possible accounts of the accident as given by witnesses. The office assistants are fully aware of the necessity and importance of a police report, and they realize the integral part that these reports play in police action. At the scene of the accident, the police officer's duties are not often pleasant but are performed with a maximum of speed and efficiency. He is fully trained in all types of first aid, knowing what to do and how to do it. If necessary, a doctor is called to the scene. Many victims are rushed by ambulance to the hospital. For others, a hospital will do no good. The doctor is a man fully aware of the tragedy that an automobile accident can cause. Death on the highways is on the constant increase, and the drivers of these automobiles are responsible for the increase or decrease of this horrible death toll. It may surprise you to know that the majority of these accidents occur between the hours of 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., a very busy part of the day when everyone is in a hurry to get somewhere. It can happen to anyone, and only you can prevent it. By driving just a little bit more carefully, you may save a life. The final report is made by the police officer on duty, and it goes into the record books. The Lansing Police Department works hand-in-hand -hand with the city's modern fire department. Directing traffic away from the scene is not an easy task, but one of which is great importance as far as safety is concerned. The report of a fire at any one of the district fire stations is immediately relayed to police headquarters, and in a matter of seconds, the necessary number of men and equipment is rushed to the scene of the fire. For some reason, fire arouses the curiosity of passers-by, and therefore one of the policemen's duties is to see that no one gets close enough to the fire to be in danger. Here's a case where a child was poisoned, and the mother put in a hurried call to police headquarters. Immediately, the police squad car and the inhalator squad arrives on the scene. The child will now be rushed to the hospital.
Another instance where the police department is called upon and the inhalator squad is when someone suffers a heart attack or a fainting spell of any type. The squad car arrives on the scene, the ambulance, and immediately the person is taken to the hospital. It's another one of the many very duties performed by the city policeman. Whenever a drowning occurs within the jurisdiction of the local police department, the life-saving crew and inhalator squad is called to the rescue. In this particular case, a child has wandered away from home and has possibly fallen into the river. When the exact location of the accident is not known, the crew must resort to dragging the river, which you see taking place here. The modern city policeman is a symbol of courtesy. He answers hundreds of questions daily. Here, we'll see him directing a lady to a certain place of business, which she is having trouble locating. An out-of-town visitor is having difficulty finding the right highway back home, and once again, the traffic officer provides the information. Helping the blind is just one of the many common courtesies extended by the man in blue who is constantly called upon to perform these duties. Here is a young gentleman who has lost his mother, and who should happen along but that big fellow in blue. After the proper questioning, he decides the place to take the boy is to headquarters where the worried parent has probably reported. One of the most confronting problems of the modern police department is downtown traffic, especially during the so-called rush hours. The Lansing Traffic Division has men placed at all busy intersections during these rush hours to keep the traffic moving. One of the services which the police department renders, which many residents are not aware of, is the inspection of their property while they're away for any period of time. If, when you go on vacation or take a trip of any kind, you will call police headquarters, this inspection service will be yours. It's another public service of your local police force. Another time when the city police are called upon not only to direct traffic, but also to handle large crowds is when a visiting dignitary arrives. In this particular case, it's the arrival of a returning war hero, General Douglas MacArthur. Not only was he met at the airport by a large group of admirers, but newsmen, reporters, radio and television men seeking a few choice words from the general. And after escorting the general from the airport to the city, the job really begins. Thousands of people jam the avenues to catch a fleeting glimpse of the distinguished visitor. And, of course, it's the job of the traffic policemen to keep the milling crowds back on the sidewalk. As you can see, this isn't the easiest task in the world. There is always a certain number of people who are determined to at least touch the visiting dignitary or possibly be fortunate enough to receive a handshake. Naturally, the policeman frowns upon this practice because it could possibly end an injury to the person who gets too close to the moving vehicle. The police department is also called upon to take care of traffic and handle crowds at any event where possible confusion looms, such as athletic events of all kinds, grand openings which attract a large number of people, and so forth. Here's a fellow who is taking his life in his own hands. He is known as the jaywalker, a person in too much of a hurry to walk to the corner before crossing, and he receives a ticket. Another duty of the policeman is checking to make sure that cars are parked properly. Also, cars overparked in metered zones are ticketed with a small piece of paper telling of their violation. One of the greatest causes of auto accidents is speeding. This is evident by looking at the records, which show that nearly 45% of traffic accidents are caused by speeding. This driver is exceeding the speed limit and thereby receives a summons to appear in traffic court. Uh-oh, what have we here? The person behind the wheel of this car is either sick, sleepy, or under the influence of alcohol. And as we see him getting out of his car, it's quite evident that it is definitely the latter, and that this gentleman is not only endangering his own life, but that of others as well. The drunk driver, after being searched to see if he has alcohol in the car or on his person, is immediately put into the squad car and taken to police headquarters. There he'll be booked for driving while under the influence of alcohol. 
The drunk driver is not only a pitiful sight, but another great menace on the highways as well as city streets and avenues. You've probably seen the many warnings reminding everyone that drunk drivers go to jail. It's also possible that he'll lose his license, and in many cases, his automobile may be his means of making a living. And that being the case, of course, his family suffers. A big percentage of accidents are traced to the fellow who tries to drink and drive. It's always a very sad individual, and a much more sober person, who has to look the judge in the eye the next morning and say, guilty, your honor. The sentence is passed, and a record is made of it. The common drunk is another great menace to society. He's the fellow who always seems to indulge just a little bit too much. It's amazing to note the number of these social outcasts that are either jailed or asked to leave the city every month. Here we see a group of them being led out of police headquarters. Whenever the motorcycle officer arrives in the neighborhood, children of all ages come on the run to see their friend and idol. He's the fellow who always has a friendly word for them and does his best to answer their many and varied questions. All residents of Lansing should be very proud of the safety patrol, a group of young and old alike who are striving to improve the safety of school children throughout the city. Their job is to see that the school children cross the busy intersection safely and the cooperation of the passing motorist is needed to assure this safety. Every spring after school is out, the Lansing Safety Council holds their annual picnic, and quite an affair it is, too. Busload after busload enter Lake Lansing Amusement Park, which the Safety Council has rented for the day. The rides are all free, and what more could a school kid ask for? A day that is loaded with fun and prizes, a day that they deserve and all look forward to. The order of the day is for hot dogs, soda pop, and fun, and there is an abundance of all three. Of course, there'll be a few stomach aches before the day is over, but that is more or less expected, and what better way to get one? The idea behind this day of fun for the children is that the Safety Council wants to reward them for the job that they have done throughout the school year. They've worked hard looking out for each other's safety, and this all makes it very much worthwhile. The police members of the Safety Council assist in seeing that everything goes well. Of course, There'll be a few skinned knees and an occasional cut, but that doesn't seem to mar the fun too much. The first aid station always sees to that. It's worthwhile to point out that never in the history of the picnic has there been a serious injury. Another very important part of the day takes place as names are drawn and prizes galore add to the fun and excitement. There are baseballs, footballs, baseball gloves and bats, in fact everything a growing young man could want, and of course dolls and dish sets for the girls. The carnival was never like this. Every spring on this day, some 2,500 kids jam Lake Lansing Amusement Park for what is their day, and a look at the records will show that they are certainly entitled to it. Lansing has twice been given the award for being the safest city in the United States, in 1944 and 1949. Lansing is the only city to win this honor twice. Yes, indeed. Lansing residents have every right to be proud of their police force and safety council working hand-in-hand -hand for the safety of all.